is Joe from Scarecrow Joe's Studio. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. This will be a three-part tutorial on how to make the Jack Skellington bust that was pictured in the intro. So we're going to break this up into three parts. The first part is going to be on how to build the armature. So first of all, we need to go through the list of materials here. You're going to need some sort of flexible cardboard. In this case, I am using a piece of um, poster board here. That works really well. You're going to need something to put into the center of your armature to kind of hold it all together. I'm going to use a Pringles can here. You can also use a water bottle or a tonic bottle, something like that. That works perfectly well. You're going to need a cardboard tube. Um, this came out of a food wrap, so it's a longer tube and it's more sturdy, stronger tube. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a marker of some sort, some masking tape, a box cutter or some sort of serrated blade. You will need some newspaper, hot glue gun, hot glue sticks. You will also need some corrugated cardboard, a piece of cor corrugated cardboard, a ruler, and then for the base, you'll need something for your base. So in this case, what I am using is a cardboard box, a sturdy cardboard box. That's what I'm going to use for the base. You'll also need some paste, which I've already made up in this container here. All right. The other thing that you will need is the head for your Jack Skellington bust, which I have already uh, put together here, or I've already strip macheted. This is just a balloon. So you want to blow up the balloon to the size of the, the head of Jack Skellington that you desire it to be. Um, and as you can see here, I have already constructed the bust uh, or one bust for this particular tutorial so that you could see this. So there's the head on there. And this is basically what the armature is going to look like when we have completed it and strip machete it. And also you will need some newspaper that you've already taken the time to tear into strips, kind of like that. Unfortunately, in this next clip, half of it, the audio disappeared. I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, I'm going to try to explain here what you're seeing. Um, I'm basically, it's pretty simple. I'm using that cardboard tube that's going to be the neck portion. And I'm just drawing uh, a circle around it. And that's the area where I'm going to uh, cut that out. So that's what you see me doing here. Um, one thing that I do want to mention while you're watching this is that, again, this is made from a balloon. So um, one end of the balloon, the, the end that you tie off, that you blow into, is generally going to be the area where you're going to insert that cardboard tube into. Um, here I'm just kind of measuring up um, the inside portion of the armature, trying to determine here um, how tall this is going to be, because obviously that Pringles can is taller than the cardboard tube. So I'm measuring that up. I'm going to determine how much I need to cut um, as far as the Pringles can here. I'm making a mark there because that's pretty much where I want 
um, my neck to be, that's the area that's going to be showing as far as the neck. And then here I'm just measuring there and that's the area where I'm going to eventually cut that Pringles tube in half. And that's the portion that I'm actually going to use for the inside of my armature to hold it together. So here I've determined um, the portion of where the neck is going to be hanging out and then that bottom piece there on the Pringles can, you want to cut that off because what we're going to do next is attach that Pringles can using hot glue onto our base and it will not, hot glue will not stick and hold to uh, aluminum or metal or anything like that very well. So that's why I chose to remove that um, metal or aluminum part of the Pringles can. Now as you can see here, um, that's how it's, that's how it's going to look. And then we're moving on to actually creating the template. Uh, we're going to use a sheet of newspaper, fold it in half to create the template for the actual bust portion of the armature. Um, just using a ruler there and um, I'm going to measure out how tall uh, that Pringles can is or if you're using any kind of water bottle or anything like that the concept is the same. The procedure would be the same. So here I'm just um, making a mark as a guide to tell me how tall that Pringles can is. And you want to go a little bit taller than the actual Pringles can. So I've measured that out. That's where my Pringles can is. Okay, so now like I said, so I've measured that. That's, that's my guide for how tall my tube is. But we want our tube to be at our, our poster board armature outer piece to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to actually go, I'm going to use my ruler here. I'm going to do about an inch and a half, inch and a half to two inches taller than what my tube is. And you'll see my reason, my reasoning for that in just a second. Okay, so this is where we're going to create our template for the outer poster board portion of our armature. You're going to create, this is, you're drawing in half of it. So make sure that you are doing this on the folded end of your newspaper here. So I'm going to use I'm going to use my ruler here so that I have a nice straight end. Always keeping in mind where how big your uh, your tube or your plastic bottle, whatever it is that you are using. And I'm going to make that just slightly, slightly longer here. All right, so I've got my line there. And then you just draw in the shape, whatever shape of your bust that you want, you're going to draw it in. Keep in mind that this is just going to be half of it. If you want a tapered bust, go ahead and make sure you draw in a tapered shape. Just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and cut out our template that we just created. And when you 
open that up, there you go. You have your template to trace onto your cardboard. Now I'm going to use this as a reference. Here's my Pringles tube that I had cut to size, um, the size that I want. Put it on my the base. What I'm doing here is that I don't like the size of this that I of my template. It's too wide. So I'm going to go ahead and create another template. So I'm just taking another piece of newspaper. Same same concept. And what I'm doing is I make I'm just using this template that I already created. It's the right size as far as height, but it's a bit too wide. So if you find that it's too wide, go ahead and use this. Use your template and just do half of it. So trace around that template onto your newspaper. This should give me the right size. So if you run into that problem, that's what you're going to do. You're going to line that up just like that. So when you cut it out, You won't have as wide as a armature. Okay, let's see how that looks. Bring that back over here. There we go. I think that's perfect. So if you look at it from this angle, that's going to be the bottom where you see that. And if you look at it from this angle over here, you can see how it's just slightly wider than the inside Pringles tube that I cut in half. So that's going to be pretty ideal for this tutorial. Okay, so now that you have your template here. The next thing that we're going to do is move on to tracing this template that we created onto our poster board. Okay, so you have your template here. Go ahead and use the bottom, the very bottom portion of your cardboard. Line that up on the bottom and to the edge. And go ahead and trace around your newspaper template onto your piece of cardboard. Just like this. We have one half there, so what we're going to do, take our newspaper template, flip it over, line it up, like that and you're going to do the same thing on the other side so that you have a piece of armature here that you're going to be able to fold in half so there you go just like that now at that point we're going to go ahead and cut that out Again, if you want a taller bust or a taller sculpture, then you're going to make you're going to make that to scale. This is going to be a shorter sculpture, um, so I'm creating a shorter armature for this piece. There you go. There's your center line because we had already drew that when we used our template and if you fold it over like that there is your outside armature portion no longer need a template but if you're going to be making a few of these and you want them all to be the same size and kind of uniform hang on to your template 
So you can retrace that. There's my Pringles can. And that's how that's going to look, just like that. I'm going to turn it this way so that you could see it from that angle. And we are just about ready to attach some stuff here. Okay, the next thing that we want to do, make sure our tube here or your plastic water bottle, whatever it is that you're using, get it as centered as it can. Draw around it using your marker because you're going to need a guide on where you're going to glue, hot glue this thing into place. If you have a box that you're using like this, it's a good idea. And something that I like to do is stuff it with some crumpled up newspaper because when you're strip macheing it and then because when you're strip macheing it and then applying the clay it will help it to not collapse from the weight so I'm just putting some crumpled up newspaper in here to help it kind of Make it a little bit more sturdy. Get it nice and even in there, as even as you possibly can. Now, if you don't have a cardboard box like this, you can create your own platform basically by taking two pieces of corrugated cardboard. So, corrugated, 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 whatever, cardboard, like this. Cut it into the length and the size that you want. Sandwich it in between uh, a piece of styrofoam, and that's going to give you a base. So, if you picture it, here, let's pretend this is a piece of styrofoam. This is my piece of cardboard and then a piece of cardboard on the bottom just like that and you can create your own base that way all right so I've stuffed this and I'm gonna go ahead and tape it shut at this point Using some just a couple of pieces of masking tape to kind of hold it hold it in place so that it doesn't open up just like that okay so we're at the point now where we're ready to attach our the inner tube here for our structure so around the mark that I've made I'm just gonna go ahead and put some hot glue all the way around that line there, that circle that I created, and stick my tube on there. And to reinforce it a little bit more, I'm going to put a bead of hot glue all the way around it. Now, if you're super concerned, that that's not going to be sturdy enough and you think it's going to fall off. A little trick that uh, you can do is take your scissors with some of your leftover poster board or um, thin flexible cardboard, whatever it is that you're using and you can create some L brackets. So basically, take that, fold it in half, 
Put some hot glue on one side. Attach it to your base and on your, your other side here, put a dab of hot glue on that side, attach it there onto your tube. I'm not super concerned about this, so I'm just going to do a couple of them. I'm just showing you this trick. It does help it to kind of just reinforce it a little bit if that's what you're concerned about. So I'll do that side and then I'll come over and I'll do this side. It's always wise and if you've watched other, um, other tutorials where I'm using hot glue, it's always wise to have a little cup of water in case you do accidentally get any on your finger. That way you could just dip your finger into the cool water and it won't burn as bad. So I always have that on hand because I've burned myself quite a bit. So anyway, there's the idea. So you're creating L brackets to kind of reinforce that to keep it in place. All right, so let's set this aside. We're going to come back over here. Get that out of the way. We don't need those scraps. Come back over here to our the bus portion here. We're going to take our tube that we're using to attach the head onto the base. Find your center point along that line there. And just draw that circle in there. Then what we're going to do is cut out that circle. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my box cutter. I don't want to dig into my table here. So I'm putting that piece of corrugated cardboard underneath it to kind of protect the table. And I'm just going to cut that out. You put your head in there like that, and then you insert the tube right inside there like that. All right, on to the next step. The next step is securing our armature bust here to our cardboard base. Now this is one of the reasons why I um, said to leave this a little bit longer because you're going to, this is how you're going to attach it. You're going to glue this down here. But the first thing that we're going to do is glue this part onto our cardboard tube here. I'm going to put some hot glue all the way around it. healthy bead of hot glue around there. You want to get this flush and as centered as you possibly can onto your base. So I'm going to sit that on there, let that, let that cool and dry. I'm going to come around underneath. And I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue right all the way around. If you are using um, poster board, make sure you get the thicker poster board. Not so thick that you can't bend it and manipulate it. But thick enough so that you have a good, um, a good sturdy support. Um, this is not the ideal poster board weight for this project, but it will work. All right, we've got that on there. That's drying. Okay, 
turn this this way so you can see that. Is attach this part to the base. Get that nice and flush up against your cardboard tube there. You can see that. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to go ahead and put some more hot glue right around here. Make sure it's on there nice and secure. Do the same thing on the other side. And there you have it. That's basically the base portion of your armature. That's the next step. We're going to go ahead and insert our tube all the way down into the inner part of that, the uh, Pringles can there that I'm using. You want to determine what's going to be the front, what's going to be the back. They should be pretty uniform. Mine's a little bit wonky, but that's not going to be a big deal because we're going to apply clay over this once um, the strip mache on it is dry. But the most important thing is your head because when you're strip macheing balloons and things like that, they're not completely even. I kind of like that. So that's going to be the front part of my Jack Skellington. But you can look at it at all angles and kind of determine where you want your head, where you want your head to be. So that's what I've determined. This is going to be, I'm going to make this the front of the head. Holding this in place, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this down. The other place that you're going to want to put some hot glue is right around the base of the neck that's inserted into your bust armature from your, that's made out of the poster board here. Don't worry if you think you've got too much hot glue and you're making a mess. Because again, all of this is going to be covered with uh, newspaper strips dipped in paste. And then after that dries, we'll apply the clay. So there we go. Next step in this process here is we have to block, block off these areas that are open. Easiest way to do that is with masking tape. So you're just going to take your masking tape. You can start from the top if you want. I like to start from the bottom. And you're just going to block that area off. I know what you're thinking, this seems pretty flimsy, but like I said, once you get your strip mache on there, um, if you have enough layers and you've taken your time and you've really done that correctly, you're going to strip mache over this, even if it's just an open space uh, just covered over with, blocked off with masking tape, you're going to have a really sound structure to apply your paper mache clay over. So that's what I've done. I've gone ahead and I've blocked off the 
empty areas that don't have any armature with masking tape. So you can see that. Looks like a hot mess, but I promise you it's going to be fine. Next step is our strip mache process. I've already made up, uh, I have a small container of paste. Um, this that I'm using is just a mixture of flour and water, so I made a thin mixture of flour and water. That's what I'm going to use for the paste. And we're going to go ahead and just, you're going to strip mache this whole thing. You're going to do several layers. The more layers that you do for this part of the process, the stronger your armature will be when you go to put your paper mache clay over. And that's going to be really important. So take your time in doing this. I know it's monotonous and it's messy, but um, if you don't do this in several layers, do at least six. Six should be fine. You want to do the whole box too. Okay, so we have completed our armature. This is the first part of the tutorial on making a Jack Skellington bust here. This is the armature portion, so tutorial number one. Again, uh, make sure that you guys are putting uh, at least six to eight strips on this whole structure, including the neck and the box all the way around. Um, you can put more on there if you want. The more uh, you put on there, the stronger your structure is going to be. So that concludes this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And um, see you in the next one where we're going to start applying our clay and designing his suit and his face. So that's going to be coming up shortly. Um, one thing I do want to mention Please make sure that you guys are putting these things in front of fans or in a dry, warm, out in the sun, um, and that's going to help it dry faster. All right, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.